I got, when I was invited here, um, I got the title Finances and Cooperation. And then somebody wrote me from the Polish Equestrian Federation, they want me to talk about the gender problem. I thought, what on earth has it to do with finances and cooperation? But nevertheless, um, I th said, well, I've anyway had a paper on it and it's not a problem for me to present it. And the figures I was given um, that you have at the moment 63% of uh, female and the rest are male members in your federation. So looking at Germany and looking at Austria, you are already uh, not that far developed in the uh, uh, gender problem as we are. Um, the title is how to get males interested in horses. If you look at the pictures, and again, you have reining, bolting, horseball, eventing, driving, show jumping, dressage, all male athletes. And later on you will, I will point out the importance of those pictures. What made me personally think about the gender problem? First of all, my hobby, like I'm sport coordinator of the Austrian Equestrian Federation and deal with all sports, but my personal hobby is vaulting. And if you go to a normal vaulting uh, club, 90% or even 100% of members are female. So we hardly have any male vaulters. That was one observation. The second observation I'm teaching at the Baccalaureate Studies of Equine Science in Vienna in the first semester. If I'm lucky, I have out of 36, one male student. <laughs> Everybody else is female. Um, the third one started really was an ele elevation, like we, we, we have every year the Austrian Equestrian Federation is invited to our sport ministry and sport organization to talk about the fundings. And there, with the person responsible, we, are, we have also a general in our sport world, we have a gender program where the sport organization tries to get female persons involved in this sport. And we are one of the few um, federations that have the op opposite problem. And our sport ministry was more than happy to fund a boys project. And that made me think of having one. <laughs> and we had actually one voting boy project funded by the sport ministry. That was the, how all the projects started. Well, you you're always in a marketing project, you have to have a vision. We want, I want to create a sport environment where females and males can enjoy the equestrian sport together. You will later on see how important this is. Um, again, if we look at the German or Austrian uh, situation, we have 70 or 80 percent of female members. Uh, here I can say and we all know from uh, school that the gender population is about 50-50 in our population, like 50% male and female. So a lot of fee uh, male persons do not get the benefits of what we can offer with our sport. We can offer, we have a, we've one of the unique sports that is close to nature. We are one of the unique sports you can do up to an old age and we have the horse as partner. That's what we can offer and it's a pity that a lot of male do not take our offer. In the marketing theories, you always look in the environment, how it looks like. And these are the figures from 85, where we had about 50-50% uh, up to 2006, where we had a distribution of 77 to 33. 
So this is how we started off. We started in 85, we had about the percentage Poland has now. And that's why, how we developed. Uh, Germany, about the same. We he heard yesterday from the uh, Hanoverian breeders, they even have 80% of members uh, as female members. Uh, what did it, what, why did it happen? We have uh, had in the past the te technology change. Um, women discovered the horse as leisure sport and the male persons discovered the motorbike and car as their mean of transport. <laughs> Therefore, they went away. When we look at times like 50, 60 years ago, equestrian sport or equestrianism, not sport as such, was a male dominance. And you probably will have, have the same situation here in Poland or in Estonia. I can still recall the times when I was traveling through Poland to Finland and Lithuania, before the EU, you see agriculture, the horse was hev still used quite frequently in agriculture. Nowadays you won't see many horses in agriculture anymore. The th second thing is, in our countries, Germany and Austria, at least I know that the equestrian sport already got a female attribute. Um, if you, um, the magazines usually are pink magazines, uh, the fashion is for females, nothing that attracts males. If you look at the fashion, uh, and uh, at this uh, magazine for children, um, this is something young girls will buy, not boys. And the same, if you look at these kind of trousers, and these pictures, and if you look at the catalog, there are two pages of male, and, <laughs> and the rest is for females. This is something we have to look at, and especially be aware of. Um, from the researches done in Germany, um, we have learned that Children in the age between five and seven um, assess the horse the same way. They have not yet decided where to go. The horse has the same value for a boy as for a girl. Uh, France, I've talked yesterday, France has a big program with uh, little ponies where they get boys already attracted. Because like in that, in that age, if you to, uh, work with uh, big warm bloods or even those normal ponies, they are too big and too risky. So Shetland ponies would be the suitable uh, way to, to get the, to this age group. Um, the second fact that was um, done, men seek male idols, models. They want a man wants to be instructed by a male person and not this is I have in my own vaulting group my son is now vaulting and because of him I have four other vaulters so we have out of ten we have four male and six female vaulters this is something uh, if you have one another one will come if you have one with nine girls that one will leave you. My son had no chance <laughs> because the father was bringing him always to that group. Um, if you look at the distribution, this is um, how our coaches in Austria are distributed. That matches exactly the memberships. We have 77% female coaches and 33% male coaches that if you start working on that, you can stop a lot of problems. Uh, disciplines. There are certain disciplines um, that have a female character, 
so-called, it's dressage and voting. Don't quote me to the male dressage riders. Um, and then you have show jumping, venting, driving, horseball that are male. Still driving, for example, even if we have 80% uh, female members in our federation in the driving sport, it's vice versa. Our, we have 80% of our driving licenses are male persons. That will change, by the way, now when we introduce the um, youth driving. There we have a high percentage of female drivers already. Um, and then we have to accept the fact, the last sentence here, and if you recall the first front page, there were top athletes. Our, our team that went to Sydney consisted of four individual riders. All of them have been male. So in the top sport, the percentage is different. Hong Kong was evenly 50-50. We had one dressage rider and one eventer, and our top dressage rider is Victoria, female, and our top eventer is Harald, is a male. And if, we, if you take the para-equestrian, then we had two males and one female. But look at your teams and look at your top sport and you will find out that you have to work with males to get enough resources for your top athletes in the, in the future. Uh, then when you do a marketing analysis, you talk about uh, opportunity and risks. We have opportunities, we have a health policy, uh, at least in Austria, a lot of people um, think about, want to sell sport as a health program. And if you get uh, young, the young generation that's duly overweight nowadays um, into sport, you can do something positive. Therefore, you can approach already schools. Uh, we've had these manager seminars uh, already here as an example. That's the same way. Those seminars, there you can get contact. Uh, for example, why I'm standing here, my father in the 60s went to a, uh, an English seminar to Great Britain and as a leisure program there was horseback riding. And that's how all of it started. Uh, if you get those managers interested in horses, uh, you might get more male persons back into the equestrian sport. Um, the school policy I already uh, mentioned, um, and then if you try to get those outdoor activities also interested for males. Risks. We, uh, the first one, um, cities are constantly growing. We are losing uh, our uh, equestrian stables close to the main people. That is a risk to the general sport and also risk uh, to gaining males. Uh, other sports um, take male people away from equestrian sport like football and motorsport. Soccer is probably one of the most wanted sports by young male. But as I pointed out before, in the age bet uh, between five and seven, it's not yet decided. There we have the chances, there we can uh, work trying to get them. That's a general problem. The bottom line, computer, television, playing consoles. You see those uh, young generations sitting in front of a television and uh, we will have to have a big effort to get them out to us. Um, yes. That would be a good idea, but it will never happen. You always have to have a high aim. Um, solutions, and you probably in this room we can add some more. 
um, you could start article um, in your federation magazines um, telling about boy camps, summer boy camps, telling about uh, how uh, males feel the sport and you can at least uh, work in your federation magazine to make it equal, that you have not only female pictures in there, that you have f male and uh, female package equally. Because one of the remarks I got from my board was, ah, that's good that you've done the re research. We have now 77%, so we have to concentrate only on female. That I would think would be the wrong approach because we would lack 50% of the population. Uh, focal, like, make it a focus in your equestrian teaching. When you instruct uh, young instructors, new instructors, make them aware of this problem, make them aware that you group young boys together, that you train them, that you make it challenging for them, interesting, to keep them interested. Um, organize manager seminars, um, like, as I pointed out, uh, when we don't get them before seven or eight, we have a hard time getting them until they are 16, 17. When they're 16, 17, they might come back into the sport or even later. There, we come in with manager seminars, for example, about natural horsemanship. Uh, try to get concepts with riding schools where you can attract school classes. There you attract all of the pup um, kids at the same time. Uh, for me, it is a problem that is an existential uh, problem for the federations. Furthermore, if you look at the figures, we are not lucky in this lucky situation as the Dutch Federation that we're still stagnating our membership numbers are going down at the moment. Um, we have chances with um, boys in the age of six and eight, we should use them and we will still have a lot of work in the future. This was an old presentation and I hope I didn't bore you too much. Thank you for your attention. And I'm naturally open for questions. that this is not the main problem in Poland still, so <laughs> we don't have many questions to you because we have a, a, lot, of, a lot to do uh, to gather more women <laughs> still to not, our society. Not, not really. Now, right now it's 62%. But nevertheless, I'm not telling about uh, trying to find uh, more market in the male gender. Uh, I'm generally, generally we have to expand. <laughs> Uh, but my remark from a situation where we have 80% of female members are uh, be aware to do marketing for both genders equally. Do not, uh, do not concentrate on one gender only. Um, I know, like for example, I've been to Turkey where the situation is different because there you find in the... Uh, Depending on the uh, population or uh, society, you find a lot of male interested. But still, like here in, in Poland, from the figures, we can say that you are on the border and you have to work that you stay with an equal membership. I think it's a problem for Poland. It's not, uh, it's hard to say because when you look for the typical sport, uh, Top sport riders, most of them they are males. There is a few only females which are competing. But when you look on the background, uh, I'm, I'm seeing that in uh, my workshop, most of the uh, people which come in there are the girls. There is a few boys which would like to compete in the in the horses. This is one side, and those will be grow up, and then there will be the sport top sport riders, and there will be more females than than males, and it's much more shown in the racing industry because already the Czechs and the Polish uh, 
racing trainers, they have a big problems because 90 pro, 80 percentage of the people which work in the stables, they are the girls. And now uh, the jockeys is also the problem because they can't find the uh, male jockey, jockey because there is too many females. And for example, in Czech Republic, there is a racing school and 90% uh, of the people which go to that school, there are the girls. And the uh, Czech racing trainers has a problem because they can't find a good male jockey. I think we should not uh, be uh, too sleepy regarding the, our 60% of the uh, registered people in the sport because we should rather look at the uh, leisure and the small school riding uh, centers where I think 90% are girls and if we have in the school center uh, a boy we keep him as a diamond yes uh, trying to attract him and save him uh, because uh, th this will be the problem because these young riders, leisure riders, will be our future riders uh, in the sport. But uh, I have another question. Uh, have you ever considered also the uh, other riding groups? Because, for example, in Poland we have uh, quite a big group of uh, reconstruction uh, riders uh, like uh, cavalry and they are very orthodox, no, no female in these groups. Uh, did you consider also these writers? Uh, we have a very traditional uh, equestrian school in Vienna, the Spanish Riding School. Uh, I think now we have the first female Bereiter. <laughs> so the Spanish Riding School accepted th three years ago two female 11 uh, who started there. It was a big fight, <laughs> but uh, the Spanish Riding School got a female director. <laughs> that made it easier. Okay, I think that was a very interesting conclusion. Thank you very much for your participation in this session. I think that was really valuable and interesting. We raised a lot of points. We didn't find the golden solution, but we could not expect to do that. But uh, we really came to a number of topics. I hope each of you could take some learnings away because this is why we were here. And as you said in your presentation, we have to analyze the outcome of the conference now and then in certain areas we see how we can move on and that's why this was helpful for EEF development in total as well and I'm looking very much forward to the conclusions and uh, summaries of the other panels. I learned right now that um, we will continue at 12.30 not at, uh, at 1 o'clock as it was written in one of my papers. So half past 12 we get together in the big session again Thank you for your contribution once again.